Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to do some preparation tonight and everybody be as sober as possible. There are forces out there that mankind cannot comprehend. The earth is warming up. Radiation is building. Sickness is running rampant all over the earth. But why? See, if something is just indigenous to earth, maybe mankind can change it. But what we're what we're having is not indigenous to Earth. It is not just for Earth. The entire solar system is beginning to do a wicked shimmy. And solar activity is a telltale sign of the exotic energy that's coming into the solar system. What it emits, the solar system is responding to, just like your skin responds to infrared light. So does the solar system respond to these exonic particles coming in because the source is coming close. The source of these waves is coming close. Now, close does not mean right there where you can see it. I can assure you that but prior to you seeing anything, this world is going to rumble like you never saw before. For the risk of sounding like a person who truly did jump out of the bushes yelling, it's coming, it's coming. Joe! Bill! It's coming! It's coming! Just trying to kind of calm yourselves and hold down a very serious conversation we're going to talk about today. It's not my job to cause anybody to believe, but out of my heart, I do wish to give you warning. A little preparatory time that you can be prepared and not taken by what you may what you may see coming. It's as simple as that. I'm gonna put some things into perspective. It will either confirm the truth within you or not. But in either case, we're gonna see drastic changes both in the earth and in mankind. We will see them. Your entire paradigm what you know is reality has been secured for a long time. Everything has stayed stationary in the skies. We keep track of seasons and everything else by atomic time. Things of that nature, constants in science and in formulas. We've been spoiled, really. We've had a time of rest for a long time. The only problems we've absolutely had were problems of war. But the great calamities were held back, far and few in between. So then the knowledge that existed so long ago will be thrust in the faces of many in the days to come. Everybody has to be prepared for this. According to the truth that you can take in. Today we're going to discuss preparations for the second wave, what the second wave is. Things that have been happening on the earth indicating massive changes that are taking place. I'm not here to connect the dots with anybody else's research, but I'm only here to tell you exactly what I know of myself. It does go with the darkness, a deep darkness that's coming back upon the face of the earth. I tell you this, you guys for me with the book of Revelation and other texts, you know that something will come upon the face of the earth from below and something will come upon the earth from above. What comes from below is already here, mingling among men, but you don't know how. Many don't know the explanation of their own dreams. Many don't know the importance of the magnetosphere. Many of us have been spoiled because everything has been somewhat stable. Ladies and gentlemen, that stability is about to be challenged in one of the worst ways it can. And as these things begin to change and alter the earth, so will the minds of mankind become desperate and war will naturally ensue. And I'm going to explain to you what the darkness is as best I can, what I'm familiar with. And it takes a toll on everybody who comes in contact with it. In fact, a person who's irresponsible should never seek out darkness. It will surely consume your soul. 
I'll tell you this. The exotic elements that are coming into the solar system, so will that darkness grow. Darkness will again be upon the face of the earth, and what was ancient will rise up again. Folks, you live in a very different time. Most of what I'm going to say to a lot of people, you won't believe. But then again, no one believes until something happens, and then when something happens, they seek out the source of those who knew. By that time, the sources have all, they're, they're all but gone. Thus, you're stuck in a place with no instruction, with things you cannot possibly believe, just like the undoing of the earth. There are signs all around you. The interiors of the earth. Everything is waking up. The earth right now is about to turn one degree. And what indication do you have of that? Does anybody have an indication of that? And it's not going to take a long time for the earth to shift at one degree, one degree in a tilt. It's huge. One degree. One degree is going to continue to change the weather in an abrupt way. The water will move. Melting will start. And this is what they always knew about. It is under the cover of global warming. I tell you this. The changes of the earth have nothing to do with humanity. And everything to do with truth. And it's covered over with a lie. Global warming, a key word used for the elite to grab their attention and foretell of meetings and everything else. Do you know what happened in 2004? That's when all the knowledge was solidified. The knowledge of global warming actually began in the 1900s. That's when the observations took place. In 2004, everything was solidified. Preparations were made in the 1930s and 40s so they could survive. Yes, they have underground bases. Who doubts that? And this won't be a talk about the underground bases, but I'm telling you, they do exist. They do exist. I mean, everybody should know the common underground bases. The CFR for Greenbrier, built in 1958-1962, that was build time. It was to allow people to operate and sustain them for 60 days. Noran, Cheyenne Mountain, 1961-1965, build time. That's the Space Control Center, communications for the National Military Command. Iron Mountain, that's where the elite are protected. We can go on, China Lake, Mount Weather, Denver, Australia, Israel. They have underground bases there too. These things were built. Four to five year build time back then, what do you think it is now? How vast do you think these structures are now? And I tell you, they're preparing for something. You know it as global warming, which began 2004. Do you not know in 2004, global warming was actually placed on NetGeo's uh, website, National Geographic, and it was also on Business Week. What's it doing in Business Week? And they give you the cover that somebody was trying to make money off of it. That was to throw you off the path. Let me tell you how they work. Can I just tell you how they work? Because global warming has to do with the exotic things that are coming into the solar system, they are intertwined, one in the same. Let me tell you how they work, though. Because you not having certain knowledge as you're kept in the dark about many things, you can only believe what you see, and so you buy the paradigm of which they place before you. When they get somebody that grows up in their educational systems, they cause them to believe in a lie, and thus they go out with a sincere heart and begin to fight for that lie. Global warming. You see how that works? They actually do believe in global warming, those spokespersons. Because they sincerely believe you can always detect the sincerity. That's what keeps it plausible in your mind. It's important you understand this process. That's how they work. It's how they always have worked. Is everybody clear on that process? Like with the government. They raise a person telling them lies about the government, education. They pat them on the back and say, job well done. And then they place them in a position of power. That person wholeheartedly does their job believing in what they're doing. They do that so that the, because you can always sense sincerity. I'm telling you that people have been raised into a lie. You have detected their sincerity, which causes you to believe in their cause. Then it spreads like a virus. This is what has happened to the world, and it's time that you look beyond it. I know there are still some folks back in Washington who refuse to admit that climate change is real. 
And on a day like today, it's hard to get too worried about it. There are folks who will equivocate. They'll say, you know, I'm not a scientist. Well, I'm not either. But the best scientists in the world know that climate change is happening. Our analysts in the intelligence community know climate change is happening. Our military leaders, generals and admirals, active duty and retired, know it's happening. Our homeland security professionals know it is happening, and our Coast Guard knows it's happening. The science is indisputable. We become a slave to a paradigm that's an illusion. All of what you see is not real, though it has real effects upon your life. You are simply maneuvered by a control system that you need to break free of. I'm trying to help you before it comes crumbling down, and then your heart starts pumping very fast. Because in your mind, you will think that your world came to an end. Men's hearts will fail them for fear, for looking after those things that are coming upon the world. That's not from one thing, that's from multiple things. 2004, global warming hit the front pages. Scientists, they already admitted back in 2004 and swept all that under the carpet. They didn't know the dynamics of climate change and thus Princeton University was charged with the task of coming up with something and coming up with something quick. Now when you talk about global warming, people get this question in their heads. They'll say, I don't believe in global warming, yet it's getting warmer every single year. So what they did was they threw out a word and people began to chase and support the word with what's happening in the world. The conditions of global warming are absolutely 100% real. The earth is warming up. Radiation is building. Sickness is running rampant all over the earth. But why? You see, there are forces out there that mankind cannot comprehend. 2004, everything started. Why did it start in 2004? Because that was the impact of a magnetar. That's why. That was the impact of a magne magnetar. That's when the top of our atmosphere was ripped off by a wave sent by a magnetar. That's why. A piece of our atmosphere was ripped off and you didn't even know it in 2004. Nobody talked about that, did they? Anybody discuss that? No, they didn't. Oh, they had all the instrumentation in the world monitoring it. They were scared to death. They didn't know what would happen. They didn't know. But I'm telling you, they were deathly afraid because they saw it coming. They can see a lot of things coming. They're not going to tell you. For what good would that do? You would only get in the way. I'm telling you that in 2004, everything changed. And that's why in 2005, they, the United Nations at the Climate Change Conference. We know that climate change is the single most important environmental issue facing the world today. The scientific evidence on climate change from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that met in Montreal in September and from many others is more compelling than ever. We know that the longer we wait, the larger will be the challenge and the damage from climate change. The broad-based consensus is that more action is required now. How convenient. 2004, global warming, that, that discussion really takes off. And in 2005, they had the climate change conference. How convenient. Ever since 2005, what have you noticed? A change in weather phenomena, a change in earthquake activity, a change with the other objects in space. That's why we send probes all over the place. For proof of something, yes, but to also monitor. We've got satellites and craft orbiting just about everything we can because they serve as an early warning system of what will happen to Earth. See, if something is just indigenous to Earth, maybe mankind can change it. But what we're 
what we're having is not indigenous to Earth. It is not just for Earth. The entire solar system is beginning to do a wicked shimmy. And solar activity is a telltale sign of the exotic energy that's coming into the solar system. The sun acts as a shield to the entire solar system. The sun does. Just as your skin acts as a shield to protect your insides and to keep things away from the precious internal portions of your body, right? So does the sun create a barrier to keep highly charged particles at bay. And every so often, it's pierced. The skin, the skin, we could say, that envelops our solar system is weakening. And things are coming through. There's nothing mankind can do about it. And it's coming. That was December 27th. Earth was impacted by that blast. 2000. And for December 27th. And wouldn't you know it, we have another one coming in December. How strange. <clears throat> Why? Because there's a phenomenon in space called pulses, right? Pulses. Pulses happen at intervals. Normally when something blows, like a magnetar or something like that, it sends out multiple shock waves. It's like a, a, I don't know, triple, quadruple explosions, right? Well, they're headed towards Earth from more than one source. There's nothing anybody can do about it which is why everybody's watching for the shock wave in October. We could have some severe atmospheric problems in October as the shock wave finally passes through Earth. It is believed right now that shock wave could affect at least one-third of our atmosphere. As far as the other effects, nobody knows. We do know that, that, that this thing is just charged with energy because it's coming from a source of almost pure energy. 2004, that magnetar just barely skipped us. In fact, it didn't even touch us, but it ripped off a portion of the atmosphere. I, I tell you this, when it passed, it was millions of miles away. But it still sucked off part of our atmosphere. That's a problem. I believe the distance of that pulse of the magnetar was about the distance from Earth to Mercury. That's the distance you're talking about. Right? I I'm sorry, twice the distance between Earth and Mercury. It was twice the distance, and it still popped off a piece of our atmosphere. Still, even with that distance. So can you begin to see what the Earth must undergo, what it's about to undergo? It's not a plaything. There were also psychological effects that took place in 2004 that have been evolving since then. Listen, a great war is also on the horizon. Now, they're going to utilize the breakdown and the fracturing of this planet. And war will ensue. They're going to utilize this heavenly event. This event of a breakdown. They, they're going to use that to their advantage for war. The inhabitants of the earth will surely be few. I would go so far as to say 50% of humanity in the first phase of this war is going to be dead. Everybody with me so far? Just like CERN, right? There is public, there is a public uh, um, side of CERN, and then there's the true side of CERN. I can assure you, nobody's trying to collide little bitty particles and to find out what. I can assure you that's not the mission. What are they going to do, cure cancer with it? No. It all leads back to something else. Now, there is the public side of science of which people are passionate about, and that's the part they know. But listen to me close. In every single experiment, somebody collects the data. Who collects the data not everybody's aware of? So what they're doing is having people who believe in the experiment, giving them a, 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 a portion of a job. They go out and accomplish that job and spend their lifetime doing it so somebody else can collect the data, and they're doing something else with the results. But the people up top, they only know the experiment. They're saying, yes, we're doing our best in the experiment. It works. And that's how they get back online and say, well, you don't know what you're talking about. CERN has nothing to do with this, that, and the other. That's what the experts will say. CERN has nothing to do with this, that, and the other. Why? Because they're passionate about that compartmentalized 
task that they have. So they accomplish what they're given to accomplish, but as a whole, they don't know what it's producing. There's a portion of science that's a mystery to those folks. They're not educated in full sciences. Why in the world would anybody ever do that? If you had knowledge of all things, there's no way you could teach others knowledge of all things. They wouldn't have a precept for it. So those who know the exotic sciences and the rest of the sciences are the ones who are collecting the information, doing something with it. The particles are already coming through. They're already coming through, right? It's kind of like a fireplace. You light up a fireplace, right? You get near the fire and you start feeling the heat. The fire didn't pass through you. You didn't pass through the fire. But you feel the heat. What is that? Infrared light. All, all you're feeling is light. You know that? That's what you feel. Light. That's all you're feeling. What is that infrared light? It's radiation. Is it going to kill you? Well, if you're overexposed to it, it's going to burn you up. But your flesh reacts to the radiation. It raises your body temperature by exciting molecules in your flesh. Therefore, you feel heat. Heat is movement. Movement is heat. Okay, you got that? Heat is movement. Movement is heat. So when you get near something that's infrared, the molecules internally begin to move around a lot more. And then you feel heat, the heat of your body. In the same fashion, this wave is coming through. What it emits, the solar system is responding to, just like your skin responds to infrared light. So does the solar system respond to these exonic particles coming in because the source is coming close. The source of these waves is coming close. Now close does not mean right there where you can see it. I can assure you that but prior to you seeing anything, this world is going to rumble like you never saw before. You telling me this second wave is not going to impact humanity? I'm telling you it is. In October we're going to find out some details, good or bad, We'll put them out there. You're going to hear many things. But it's always good to have your ears open to the Holy Spirit and the truth that is within you. That when it is time to do something, you move. And when it is not time to do something, you stay still. Because it could be life or death to you. That means I don't have the final word on what you must do. The Lord does. Not one man on earth has a final word for what you must do. The Lord knows what you must do. And because he said he would never leave you nor forsake you, he will instruct you. Okay? So as I go through these things, I can only advise. But you must have your ear open to the Lord. Because if you don't, you're going to follow the advice of man, and by that man's word, you may die. Thank you.